Today we're going to discuss a somewhat incredible discovery, or I guess more specifically confirmation, that cells inside our bodies seem to vibrate with a very specific frequency. Or to be more specific, a resonant frequency, or a natural frequency, that makes cells vibrate with a larger amplitude in certain frequencies. In other words, they have a natural vibration that hypothetically could even be heard if we had powerful enough instruments. And so, hello wonderful person, this is Anton, let's discuss this new discovery and this really intriguing experiment that seems to have proven the existence of these natural frequencies in human cells, find out how all of this was achieved, and of course why this is technically super important for medical fields. But let's start with the obvious. Pretty much everything out there vibrates. Everything oscillates, everything moves around. As a matter of fact, the concept of temperature, or how hot or cold something is, in more physical terms, reflects the kinetic energy of various materials or various substances. With higher temperature just meaning more kinetic or vibrational energy inside a certain substance. And pretty much everything vibrates at certain frequencies. And usually in high school physics, you learn about the most famous example of this natural frequency and how it's actually really important to understand them because otherwise it can lead to a disaster. This is the famous example of the Tacoma Narrows Bridge that was built without calculating the natural frequency of its vibration correctly. Or specifically, it was actually calculated without realizing that the winds in this region produce exactly the same natural frequency, which basically led to this bridge doing this. And this didn't last long, with the bridge collapsing eventually. And so here, the combination of the natural frequency of oscillation of the bridge itself, mixed with the frequencies produced by various winds, ended up producing enormous oscillations that were completely unexpected. And though in this case, the actual physical phenomenon also includes something known as aeroelastic flutter that was exciting the bridge a little bit too much, in the end, it was due to the increases in the amplitude of natural frequencies that the bridge finally collapsed. And so, small things and big things vibrate. And it was always suspected that maybe our cells do as well. Obviously not much, but possibly a little bit. And this is actually known as the frequency resonance hypothesis. An idea that was proposed approximately two decades ago and that essentially tries to state that, well, maybe just maybe, there is possibly a natural frequency to most of the cells in our body. It's probably not all the same and they all probably vibrate with different frequencies, but the vibration is still probably there. However, alternative explanations actually suggested almost the opposite. Mostly because our cells are usually made out of somewhat elastic material that kind of absorbs vibrations, which kind of ends up damping the cell's vibration completely and prevents the cell membrane from moving too much to be detectable. Or, moreover, they might have different frequencies with all of them sort of creating a bunch of noise and nothing that could be detected or that could be useful. And so in order to try to see if this hypothesis was correct or not, a lot of scientists have been trying to find new techniques to try to listen to these vibrations. And it really wasn't until recently that some of these experiments actually became possible. And the way all of this was achieved was by using a somewhat intriguing technique. It's actually based on the principle of cantilevers. We normally use these in a lot of different structures to basically counterbalance something. Here the cantilever is obviously the structure that's only supported on one end. Although a better example here would be a typical diving board in, for example, a public pool. Here, by placing something that vibrates a little bit on the tip of this board, you're actually going to amplify these vibrations dramatically, allowing them to be seen as these large oscillations of the board itself. But in this case, it's a micro cantilever, a microscopically sized diving board, where instead of placing a large object, you're basically placing either proteins or cells. These devices nowadays are extremely small in size, just micrometers and even smaller, and can then use things like lasers to make things vibrate in order to discover natural resonance or natural frequency. And so basically by placing a bunch of cells on top of a micro cantilever, it then becomes possible to start making it vibrate more and more and more. This is usually used for proteins, but in this case it can also be used for cells. And so a few years back, researchers working on various human cells and using these micro cantilevers for slightly different purposes, detected unexpected signals. Here the vibrations were just a little bit different from what the scientists hypothesized. Eventually leading the scientists to propose that maybe just maybe this is actually because the cells themselves also vibrate, changing the overall results. And so in this new study, the scientists decided to focus specifically on discovering the frequency. 
First they used a tiny micro cantilever, here this was approximately 50 micrometers by 270 nanometers across and made out of silicon and gold, and second they decided to pick certain human cells used previously for a lot of different research. Here they used individual human breast cells, in this case designed for medical studies. And by placing these cells on the micro cantilever and then varying the vibrations, they discovered that they do have a resonant frequency after all, with slightly different frequencies depending on the size of the cell. They actually analyzed frequencies between 1000 Hz and 1 MHz, but found specific anomalies between 10 and 30 kHz and then between 150 and 180 kHz, basically suggesting that those seem to be vibration frequencies of these very specific breast cells. And at least in theory, those smaller frequencies between 10 and 30 kHz can physically be heard by human ear. And so theoretically, instead of just looking at the cells, we can technically listen to them as well in order to learn more about them based on their vibrations. And this concept of mechanobiology in essence can actually open up entirely new doorways for a lot of different types of medical fields. And so here the assumption is that all cells in our bodies will produce some kind of a resonant frequency. And by listening to individual resonant frequencies, it becomes possible to hear if something is healthy. Likewise, it potentially becomes possible to use ultrasound, for example, for medical means, maybe even to cure a certain body part where no other medicine and no other procedure works. And so by knowing a certain frequency of a certain cell or a certain body part, once again, for example, breasts, it might become possible, at least in the future, to use these resonant frequencies to heal someone in ways that would be otherwise impossible. Now this is still super hypothetical and obviously nobody really knows where this goes just yet, but this does open up a lot of doors. Here it was actually previously assumed that ultrasound could maybe modify the inflammatory response, either helping body heal or stopping inflammation when it's no longer needed. For example, imagine being able to stop allergies by just using ultrasound. Or imagine using ultrasound for physical treatment of specific body parts where only a very general treatment was available before. In other words, it might become possible to treat individual regions in our bodies instead of taking medicine that seems to affect everything. Or it may also become possible to use ultrasound to activate release of certain drugs in certain regions of the body, basically using ultrasound frequencies for very directed drug-based treatment. This concept has been proposed years ago and it's known as smart delivery vehicles. And the previous smart delivery vehicles were mostly suggested to use some kind of a pressure activation or temperature activation, this opens up a door to ultrasound activation, with the last suggestion being non-invasive surgery. Being able to for example destroy something inside the body by using those resonance frequencies and overstimulating those vibrations until something you're trying to get rid of explodes or disappears completely. And so at the moment this is actually a super exciting discovery for a lot of medical fields. But even just from the idea of biology, it basically implies that currently our bodies are making a lot of miniature noises with possibly some cells much louder than others. And exactly what noise our body makes overall, that would be super interesting to discover. I don't think we're going to know anytime soon, but chances are that if there is some kind of an overall frequency for the entire body, it's most likely going to be in ultrasound frequencies inaudible to human ears. Either way though, I really can't wait to hear more about this and possibly hear about other discoveries and other frequencies from other cells, and I'm definitely going to be following this up just to see where all of this goes in the next few years. And so until those future videos, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Support the show on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow and as always, bye bye.